So let's see what we can learn from this great example of high-level college single strategy and technique. First, let's watch this point two times, and then we'll analyze it. So this is the number one singles match between Ohio State and USC. All right, so we've got a second serve here, and we know it's a second serve by the racket path. We can see where the toss is. We can see where his strings are now facing. Strings are facing off to the to the right. This is absolutely a uh, – it's actually slightly back, actually, when I look at it here. The strings are actually facing back toward the back fence. So this is a kick serve, second serve, and we get actually a short ball. A short return. So one of the things I like to tell my students is if the ball lands in front of the service line, don't let it cross the baseline. And you see a lot of recreational players. The ball bounces in front of the service line, and then the recreational player stays standing. That was like a person that I just drew there like that. <laughs> they, stand, they stay standing behind the baseline, allowing this ball to take its time coming to you. So you want to go forward, and that's exactly what you see from the number one player for Ohio State. Now, the shot that he hits is a slice approach shot to the opponent's backhand. But I want you to look at the footwork I made Three days ago, a video on the slice backhand footwork called the karaoke step. And this is where you're, if you're hitting on your left side because you're right-handed, your back leg actually steps behind you because, one, it keeps your body to the side, so it really helps your technique. But also, it allows you to continue going forward because every action has an equal and opposite. So when you swing on the left side of your body, your back leg is going to want to go to the right side of your body. So he actually steps behind because it's pretty darn tough to have two limbs on the same side of your body go forward at the same time. So this actually allows him to get to the net faster and continue moving through this shot. So here he is following the ball. This is so, so good. When you come to the net, first off, he hit to the opponent's backhand, right? So he could have hit it to the forehand or the backhand, but he chose the backhand, right? He's going to hit this slice approach shot low to his opponent. But notice where the player in red is standing. He's actually bisecting the, the down the line and the cross court shot. When doing that at the net, you're actually going to be slightly on the same side of the court as your opponent. This is what I call shadowing. You're going to chase your opponent as if you're their shadow and you're staying with them. If his approach shot had gone to this corner, then he would not be standing here. He'd be over here so he could bisect the cross court and down the line passing shot. The timing of a split step, really important. When you are going forward, when you're returning serve, anytime you're going to split step and you want to split step as your opponent's hitting, and specifically, you want to be in the air as they hit and then land after they hit. You can see this. He jumps, the opponent hits, and then he lands. So you want to be in the air as your opponent hits the ball. I like to tell my students it's as if there's electricity that zaps the court. Every time your opponent hits, bzzz, right? And you don't want to get zapped for the four milliseconds that they're touching the ball with their strings, right? So you want to be in the air, and then after they hit, it's safe to hit the ground again. You want to think of it that way. So film yourself and make sure that you are in the air every time your opponent hits the ball. And what that does is it synchronizes your brain and your reaction time with when your feet hit the ground. That way, when you land, your legs are loaded and you can explode in any direction. Now, here's a really cool strategy. When you hit your approach shot into the corner, what you can use is the fact that your opponent needs to recover back toward the middle against them. And watch what he does. He ends up volleying behind the opponent. Watch this again. The opponent is going toward the center of the court, and he actually wrong foots him and hits behind him. Now, let's look at the timing of the volleyer step with the contact. This is really important. It is vital that you learn to make contact with the ball before your stepping foot hits the ground. So it's hit, then step. And you can see that. Watch how he makes contact with the ball, then his front foot hits the ground. This is absolutely on purpose. Hit the ball, then you step. It's important that you are stepping. Isn't it funny? It looks like he's like combing his hair. 
<laughs> with his with his non hitting hand. See, that's like oh, <laughs> he's like striking a pose there. I love it. But and that's just his non hitting arm is going back as a counterweight. But notice he's hitting the ball, then his foot hits the ground. And why is that? It's so that he can continue moving forward as he's hitting. You don't want to plant the front foot before you hit the ball on most volleys. Now, if you're just warming up and practicing and hitting volleys, that's one thing. You see the pros do this all the time. They're just standing still. But if your momentum is carrying you forward and you're moving, you want to hit, then your foot hits the ground. That way, as you're hitting, your momentum is still going because once your foot hits the ground, you're done moving and you'll collapse and you'll tend to hit that ball into the net. So he hits the ball behind the opponent. His opponent kind of acknowledges, and the the guy who hit the winner, Volley, goes back. All right, let's watch this point one more time. Now, if you love working on your strategy and technique as much as I do, then I've got two things for you. First, the Fuzziola Balls Singles and Doubles playbooks. These things are unreal. To get them, just use my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. Page after page. If you're a singles, singles player, how to beat people who are lefties. If they're serving and volleying. If you want to get to the net more often. If they're aggressive baseliners or pushers. This book, unreal when it comes to knowing exactly how to beat your toughest opponents. When it comes to doubles, you want to learn strategies from the Brian brothers and Martina Navratilova and Gigi Fernandez. Page after page, of strategies to beat your opponents. Look, they run plays in other sports. Why not run a play in, in tennis? And what's really cool is, here, this is called the full poach on the ad side. All you gotta do to watch how this is run is take your phone, place your phone over the QR code and up pops a video of Will Hamilton explaining each strategy. Again, my link is in the description and pinned in the first comment. Now, in addition to learning the strategies, you want to use them against people in your local area. So use my link, playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis to find people to compete against, practice with, and even find a coach who's going to help you learn those strategies. And when you use my link, you get 50% off when you join. All right. We, f we saw the serve, it was a kick serve, and it was a kick serve to the backhand, and the ball jumped up to the opponent's backhand, and he ended up hitting short. Now, one rule I want you to follow here is, when your opponent hits the ball short, which is really anything that lands in front of the service line, you want to move in and catch that ball before it crosses the baseline. Don't be complacent. Don't let them hit in front of the service line and you wait for it to come to you. No, you're going to go forward and get that ball not letting it cross the baseline. Now, because you moved forward, hey, we get to hit an approach shot. What was cool is he hit a slice approach shot into the opponent's backhand corner. What's nice about the slice is a couple things. First, most of your opponents don't deal with slice shots coming to them a lot. So they might not be very good at understanding the timing of what can happen when that ball is floating and maybe it checks up and slows down when it hits the ground. It's a great idea to give your opponent a shot that they often don't see just because they don't have enough experience and practice dealing with it. And you can also force an or you can often force an error right off the bat with it. The second thing is a slice approach shot typically takes a little more time to get to your opponent. So that means you have a little more time to move forward, cutting off angle, making it harder for them to get the ball to your feet. And last, incidence equals reflection. So what's cool about underspin is oftentimes if you can hit it very low over the net, the ball will stay very low when it hits the ground, right? Because the ball comes in at a shallow angle and it leaves at a shallow angle. By the way, underspin doesn't stay low because of the underspin. It stays low because incidence equals reflection. Topspin doesn't jump up because of the topspin. Topspin seems to kick, remember that kick serve to that guy's backhand? The reason a topspin ball kicks up off the ground actually has nothing to do with the spin. It's because topspin has a sharper descent into the ground and incidence equals reflection. So that's a nice little tidbit. You can uh, you know, quiz your, your doubles partner about that sometime and say, hey, why, why does a slice ball stay low or why does the top spin ball kick up? It's not because of the spin. It's because of the initial uh, incidence and then the reflection off. So when you go forward with the slice approach shot, 
If you're hitting it to your opponent's backhand side, that's a great strategy. He actually hit what's called a safety post. He did not hit the ball super close to the sideline, which would actually make it easier for him to pass this guy. He actually kept the ball inside the court, which gives this person actually less angle for the pass. It's a perfect place to hit the ball. Shout out to Great Bass and Vic Braden and Steve Smith. So you want to hit this ball somewhat like three feet in, four feet in from the sideline, and that actually gives your opponent less angle to hit around you. You'll also notice that when this guy came forward, he shadowed, that's what I call it, shadowing, he actually followed the ball. That bisects where the opponent can hit the ball down the line and cross court. If you're in the middle of the court, when your opponent is in this corner, you're covering the cross court and leaving the down the line wide open. He was not standing here expecting a down the line. He was standing here because that's actually equidistant to the down the line and cross court pass. Now what was really cool is when we see the baseliner hit this ball to the net player and the ball started going, or the uh, baseliner started going to the middle, he actually wrong footed him and hit the ball behind him. Since we know that the opponent has to move this way, we can use that against him and we can hit the ball behind. If he had hit his approach shot a little wider and the opponent was still way over here, we probably would have seen him hit into this open court. And by the way, anytime you hit into the open court, make sure that you hit the ball short. That way it bounces twice before they ever get to the ball. I love doing these strategy videos. I hope you do too. Let me know in the comments below, uh, like what was your favorite thing about this video? Maybe something that you learned that you didn't know before. I want you to go out and film yourself playing matches, practicing. Look at your technique, look at your strategy. I think maybe you've been watching enough videos now with all the great channels uh, there are on YouTube that you know what you should be doing. Now you gotta go out and film yourself and make sure you're doing it. You work on these strategies and there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.